Ahmed, thank you very much. We have a couple of teams that start the regular season expecting to play on the weekend at the 810 Conference Tournament, but they got a win today to get there. Eight-seeded Davidson taking on the top-seeded VCU Rams. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Paul Burmeister alongside Tim McCormick. And what a treat we have to start this day here at the A-10 tournament. Marquee matchup, the last two regular season champs, Davidson from last year, VCU from this year. What's your headline here? It's quarterfinals day in the A-10, Paul. I'm expecting fireworks yesterday. We had two competitive, highly aggressive games, and I think that I'm looking for the same thing today. Uh, the big boys are in town now. Seeds one through four are in Brooklyn and ready to go. And trust me, if you want to see a fantastic point guard matchup, man, we've got one for you featuring two of the top players in the league. Foster Lawyer for Davidson, Ace Baldwin for VCU, the A-10 Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year. Head to head, this is a reason to get excited. Good guards, quality head coaches as well. VCU Mike Rhodes has helped the Rams increase their 8-10 win total regular season. Each of the last four years from 8 all the way up to 15 this year, he's never won an 8-10 tournament title. That quest begins today. Other side, Matt McKillop, when he played at Davidson 2002-06, one of the best three-point shooters they've ever had, needs his Wildcats to be better there today. They made only 4 out of 22 yesterday. That was fun yesterday, quarterfinal round. Going to be even better here. First of four matchups here. 11.30 and 2 to be followed up later this afternoon and this evening. Wall-to-wall -wall basketball, tournament style here this afternoon. Ace Baldwin, we heard Matt McCall just talking in the studio. Only the second player ever at guard in the A-10 to be named not only the conference player of the year, but also the defensive player of the year. We found that out earlier in the week. Brandon Johns. Former Michigan player starts out the right way for the Rams. VCU is the fastest, most athletic team in the A-10. If the Rams hit 70-plus, massive advantage. Pressure already getting to Davidson. They do maintain the possession, though. Mike Rhodes telling us during the week, yes, we're all about the pressure. We want to make it tough for the other team to get into their offense, but we want to sit in our set and make those possessions tough. 0 for 1 now for Sam Menenga, and back comes Ace Baldwin. Both teams play a very aggressive style, but this is the question that I ask every time I have a VCU game. Paul, does Davidson look composed today? Watch their turnover numbers. That is the whole key that matters. Who do you think will be guarding most of this game, Ace Baldwin? Well, I, I would say that it's obvious where you, you would look at the two point guards going head to head. I don't think that's a good matchup for Foster Lawyer. I think it'll be Grant Huffman. John struggling to maintain control, picks it back up. VCU wrapped up the regular season title. That's Jaden Nunn making it 4 nothing. Wrapped up the title a week and a half ago and won the conference by three games. And here is Nunn on Foster Lawyer. You talk about the composure. I go right to the turnovers, the assist to turnovers. The main two ball handers yesterday, Foster Lawyer with it right here, Desmond Watson. 11 assists, only two turnovers yesterday. See if they can get close to that today. That's Ace Baldwin coming in to rip that one away. Possession will keep it here with the Wildcats with 10 to shoot. That's a problem for Davidson, and Foster Lawyer is one of the headiest, toughest point guards in college basketball, but when they played at Davidson, he had an uncharacteristic nine turnovers. That simply will not work against VCU. It was the only time during the season that he had more turnovers than points. As Matt McCall pointed out a couple of minutes ago in the studio, only had seven points that day, then didn't play in the rematch. Meninga, three to shoot, tough drive. He starts 0 for 2, gets his own rebound, and still can't find the bottom of the cup, and it's rebound Rams. Another problem to watch, potentially. VCU loves to go inside, and Davidson has no shot blocking whatsoever. Jalen Deloach, the assist from Ace Baldwin, and a quick 6-0 lead. All of those shots for VCU, dead point-blank range in the paint. Well, Grant Huffman just passed him, and Ega was very good, aggressive, and assertive yesterday. It's kind of the 1A point guard to Foster Lawyer with it right now. Shot clock now inside 10. Desmond Watson, game high 17 points yesterday, made six out of eight shots. They only have four to shoot now. Nick Kern, great defense. 
They'll have one to shoot. Already we see the smothering style on defense from the Rams. Davidson is the most athletic team in the A-10. When you say VCU basketball, what do you think of, Paul? Defense. Yeah, aggressive, junkyard dog, red-hot defense. They've got one second on the shot clock. And lob it in, and there's a possession without getting a shot. Okay, so VCU known for its defense. How would you define what they do offensively? They drive, they attack, they get to the lane. And I'm really anxious to watch this Brandon Johns, Sam Menengo matchup at the center position. A couple of highly versatile big guys that can go in and out. And look at that delivery. Now, I think that Grant Huffman had a really good position there. A foul goes against Grant Huffman. I agree. Looked like he was set up there. I mean, he was waiting. He looked like he was there for a good two or three seconds. John's coming off his only double-double of the season, coming last Saturday at George Washington. Already has a bucket here this afternoon. Jaden Nunn loses control. Back up top to Baldwin. Wide open three. In and out. Davidson looking for its first bucket. They had three scores and double figures yesterday. Lawyer was one with the ball. Drives in. Now they are struggling shooting here early. Now remember, they played yesterday. The second day is always the hardest to get your emotions going. So that's on. It's an offensive foul against Jaden Nunn, against Foster Lawyer. We'll take another look here. A little head down there by Nunn. So, Paul, let me be honest about something. I, I mentioned the fact that VCU's got this intense pressure defense. I do think they get impatient. And if Davidson is poised and they make five or six passes, I think they can get really good shots against this defense. Yeah, we were talking before the game, and you think getting inside of 10 seconds on the shot clock is the benefit for them. Skogman working against David Schreiber, three-point specialist for the Rams. Offensive foul. Usually the post guy can have two hits against the defense. The third one's not going to work. There's two, three. Uh-uh. Good call. Both teams have taken four shots. Davidson hasn't made one yet. VCU has made three. To your point, though, the three times VCU has gone to the basket, they've scored. The perimeter game so far, 0 for 1. David Schreiber on the court. He changes the offense with that perimeter game. Kern forces one inside. And the rebound to Lawyer. Up ahead to Watson. Upstairs. Love watching him play yesterday with those 17 points. Also had six rebounds. Gets the first bucket for the Wildcats there. It's a good point, Paul, because Lawyer and Menenga score 45% of Davidson's points. They need an outlier, somebody you don't expect. And I thought that Watson was that guy. Absolutely that guy, the leading scorer. Shot clock down to 10. Went off the knee of a Davidson defender. Foster Lawyer. Picks up the rebound here, eyes up. Spots number four, and Desmond Watson gets the first two for Davidson. Look back at the second round yesterday. It all started with Lawyer and Davidson knocking off St. Bonaventure. They trailed two to nothing, but that was it. They ran away from there. Ronald Polite right there in the next game. Hit that three in the final minute. That put George Mason on top for good. They move on to play St. Louis. Eric Reynolds in the evening was terrific. 34 points. St. Joe's moves on. Big evening for Philly. LaSalle as the 11 seed. They also live to see another day. First quarterfinal appearance since 2015. You want to go one layer more in Philly. Villanova won in the Big East tournament as well. But that's what happened yesterday. This is game one of the quarterfinal round. VCU and Davidson, and right after this one, we look forward to St. Louis and George Mason. A lot of hoops here this afternoon and this evening. Four games coming your way right here on USA. Paul Burmeister, Tim McCormick, Corey Robinson here at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Just underway. VCU, the regular season champs, up 6-2. David Schreiber had the ball knocked away. Normally we see him outside. Two seconds to shoot. Jeff Jackson got to let it go. Ball batted back, and Sam Meninga comes up with it. And we'll see if the Wildcats can get the shooting going here, Tim. They're one for five. Their only make came via slam dunk from Watson. Davidson, Princeton principles, they really spread the court well. 
A lot of flare screens, pin downs, dribble handoffs. But you can see the patience against St. Bonaventure yesterday. When they shot quick, they struggled. Shot clock down to five. Johns against Meninga into a matchup you were looking forward to. Difficult fadeaway. And that is a shooter shot there. First two for Meninga. David Schreiber just gave the ball up. Four out of seven knocking down threes on Saturday. Defense got to think about this team a little differently when he's on the court in his zone now. I think that's important because the balance is hard to beat for VCU. They've got five guys that average between nine and 13 points. I'm not sure who you focus on. They're all weapons. Inside, this will be easy underneath for Skogman. Just like that from six to nothing to all tied at six. Good turnout of both crowds. We have both pet bands to our right. We have Davidson. Left the Peppas from VCU. Zeb Jackson, second player on this team from Michigan. Pump fake, gets him inside, and one. I've watched VCU play a lot of basketball this year, and a, a big key to their success is Brandon Johns, their starting center, and Je Zeb Jackson off the bench. Both Michigan transfers, and I believe that if Michigan could have kept them in fold, at a position where they desperately need help at the center, at the power forward position and backup guard, I think Michigan would be firmly in the NCAA tournament if they had those two two players on their team this year. Zeb Jackson can't make the three-point play. Both Jackson and Johns have doubled their playing time from Michigan to VCU and are a big part of what the Rams are doing here. Regular season champions. Reed Bailey has checked into the game. Connor Kachera with the ball right now in for the first time and misfires to Watson. And a foul called as he was cutting to the hoop. We talked about the three-point shooting of the Davidson Wildcats coming in. And Connor Kachera with the ball right there made seven out of nine against UMass. Last month has cooled down since. We just saw the hold there against Desmond Watson. Reed Bailey, the freshman, back to Kachera. Menenga just hit his first bucket, shot clock down to seven, little jump hook. And there's an and one. I like the patience there as he backed in. But it's another one of those trips where they took their time, they worked the shot clock, and when you're posting up, Sam Menenga, the strength of his game is he keeps a really low center of gravity. That's the reason he was able to take the hit and still knock it down. Can't connect on the free throw. Let's go to the baseline. Corey Robinson with more on Menenga. Paul, Sam Menenga's parents live in New Zealand. They try to watch his games at their live stream, but mostly are just forced to read box scores. Sam's dad has never actually seen him play in America, but his mom got the chance to spend two weeks over Christmas break this year to watch her son play on American soil for the first time, and the game she saw was at VCU. Sam told me it was super cool to show her what he does, and New Zealand's 18 hours ahead, so they actually woke up at 5.30 a.m. their time to watch this game, Paul. Corey, thank you. Great touch there by David Shriver on the way to the hoop. Matt McKillop told us, ball knocked away there, turnover. VCU coming back the other way. Davidson head coach Matt McKillop on Corey's thought there, telling us how important it was for Meninga to play on the national team for New Zealand. Great little runner there off the glass from Ace Baldwin. Ace Baldwin is so much more than just a defensive player. He showed what he's capable of by going and dropping 37 at St. Louis against Yuri Collins. This guy plays both ends of the court. And now again, Menega finds himself one-on-one, -on -one, this time against Deloach. The right-hand little scoop won't go. And back comes Jameer Watkins. No numbers, he'll slow it down. Back to Deloach, who would like to get inside. Great bounce pass to Jackson. And the block from Bailey, but that'll put Jackson on the line for two. So what does Ace Baldwin do? Well, on defense, he's the best player in the league. He gets after it, forces the turnover, and at the other end, he's able to get to the rim whenever he wants, an elite finisher. And when you think about all of the things that he does for this team, when they have had him healthy this year, one of the best teams in the East, but he broke his wrist 
earlier this season. He didn't want to come out. He wanted to keep on playing with a broken wrist. And speaking of out, Ace Baldwin goes out right now, and he plays over 30 minutes per game, as you would expect from the conference player of the year. And the offense and the defense, you'll, you'll notice his absence. They look different when he's not out there. Mike Rhodes and I spoke just before the game, and I asked him about Ace Baldwin. His response, I don't even need to coach him. He knows exactly what to do and how to do it well. What if you had a dozen guys like that? <laughs> National champ. <laughs> Reed Bailey, the freshman. Matt McKillop told us during the year, we're going to live through his freshman mistakes and play right through them. He has started every single game this year. If you had 12 ace bald ones, though, you might struggle a little bit on the glass. <laughs> he might find a way to get a few. Shot clock down to three. Lawyer looking, got to fire that one up. Second time we've seen that happen. They couldn't get a shot off because of the defense. And that's without Ace Baldwin on the court. BCU led 6-0 early. Now they're back up by 6 at 14-8. Rams coming in as the number one seed. Davidson won yesterday against St. Bonaventure to play here in the quarterfinals. As Lawyer up ahead, Connor Cachero spins into the lane and has it swatted away. Locked to Jameer Watkins. As Tim mentioned, you think VCU, you think defense in many forms. That time on the block from Watkins, and the Rams are up by six. Davidson trailing by six early in the quarterfinal round. Their head coach is Matt McKilla. Coach, what is the key to staying patient and running your offensive set against the pressure that VCU brings? Uh, well, the biggest key is that they don't get in their pressure if we have strong defense and we get rebounds. Uh, we gave them some easy looks around the rim, a little uncharacteristic of what our defense should allow. So we got to do a better job, and it's all off of penetration. It's all off of their ball screens. They haven't made any perimeter shots yet. We've got to keep them out of the lane. We've got to guard ball screens better. We've got to be help side better. If we do that, we don't have to face their pressure. It's really the, the, the other side. It's, it's in the front court where we're struggling with some of our turnovers. So we just have to remain under control. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Matt, Corey, thank you. Tim, what was your main takeaway there? Build a wall around the paint. And also on the offensive end, if Davids can be highly efficient and score the ball, then all of a sudden they're able to get back and set up their defense. So far, VCU has not been very effective with their full court pressure. You know pretty soon if they score, they're going to bring the heat. Just before the ball was tipped here, you said you wanted to see Davidson playing with composure. They were down 6-0. What do you make of their composure from that point? Been okay, not great. Uh, turnovers have not been a huge issue. But so far, Foster Lawyer has not been able to get off because of the length and athleticism of this VCU deep. He had the same problem when he played in the Big Ten against Michigan State. Yeah, only seven points in the one time he played against VCU this year. Hasn't scored yet. Lost his balance. Michelle Spadone with the ball, checking in for the first time. Now the shot clock down to eight. Reed Bailey spinning in against Johns. And a rebound to the Loach. With Ace Baldwin on the bench, Zeb Jackson takes over at the point. At Michigan, he played primarily shooting guard. This has shown a big improvement. Yep, John's wide open there, brick laid, and the rebound to Lawyer. Meninga open, thought he would take that. Tries to get in closer. Davidson coming into the tournament, winning four out of five, and then winning yesterday by double digits against St. Bonaventure. First time they've had a run of five out of six wins the entire conference season. Shot clock again down to seven. Tough shot for, for Lawyer there. None got a piece of it, and you talked about that. The length of the VCU defenders make it awfully hard for him to get a shot off. Good look inside to the Loach, and he cashes in. I like a lot of what Davidson does defensively. They do a pretty good job of contesting shots, but the truth is they're 15 in the conference in block shots. There's just no resistance at the rim. Wildcat offense came back after a tough start to tie the game at six. Right now, VCU on an eight to nothing run. Sam Menenga misses again. And here comes Zeb Jackson. Conference player of the year, Ace Baldwin still on the bench. Kern penetrates, floats, and a rebound to Meninga. Now Davidson has missed each of his last six shots after making four in a row earlier. 
And one. There's the first basket for Foster Lawyer and the top free throw shooter in the conference will go to the line. Great crossover. Surprised that Brandon Johns didn't bring more help. And it's dangerous to let Foster Lawyer see the ball go in. If Davidson's going to win this game, I think that Foster Lawyer has to score 15 plus points. They're going to have a hard time scoring against this Rams defense. At 14 points yesterday to go along with six assists. Now has his first three points here today. He'll check out. Grant Huffman comes in. Also sprinting to come in is Sean Logan. And this is a tall lineup right now for Davidson, Tim. You have Logan and Bailey at 6'10 and above, and Menenga checking in at 6'9. The question I have to ask, though, is for the Wildcats with this lineup, who's going to score? Look out there right now. Normally, it would be Desmond Watson. He had 17 yesterday. He only has two so far today. Ace Baldwin back in. Kicks it over to Kern. Good cross step to get in, in close. And the rebound to Sean Logan just after he checked in. Grant Hoffman with it. Had five assists and no turnovers yesterday. That's a foul up top against Kern. Oh, pardon me. That is a foul offensively against Logan right after he got that rebound. See it at the top of the screen. He stuck that right leg out there. And he knew it right away. So Logan is going to get blamed and he's going to get the foul. But I think that was more Desmond Watson's fault. You've got to let your big man get established and set the screen before you come off. Baldwin working against Shalone. Almost a travel there. Into the lane goes none. High arching shot. No good. And a rebound called inside of the foul called inside against Toby Lawall. Good position inside, and when I watch the Wildcats, one of the things that I always loved about Bob McKillop teams, just like Bo Ryan at Wisconsin, they do a great job of teaching their players how to defend below the waist, using your legs and your hips, not only to cover your man, but to block out on the glass. Exceptional rebound position there. Checking in on the defense of ECU, so far they've created four turnovers. And the Wildcats making just 33% of their shots. Number of times as well, multiple times they haven't gotten a shot off on a possession. Desmond Watson inside, his second basket. Cuts the deficit to three. Like watching Ace Baldwin play last week against George Washington, Tim. He didn't score, he was 0 for 9, but he still had seven assists. Kicks it out to Schreiber, hit four of those last week. That's his first today. And the beauty of that basket, it allows them to set up their full court press. This is the best thing that they do. Last six games, Schreiber's made more than half of his three-pointers. That went right to Nick Kern. Out of control, offensive foul. That was critical because Grant Huffman could have had his second foul. Grant Huffman draws the foul there. Rams lead by six. Coach, how would you grade that first 12 minutes by your team? Good intensity on the ball, but we let the ball get downhill a little too much on, on defense. And offense, we missed a lot of chippies. You know, we got to finish at the rim. We got get, we got downhill and we were around the rim, but got to finish better. But they're a good team. They're not going away. We set the tone with our defense, but we got to be a little more consistent on the offensive end. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Mike Rhodes, Rams, they were consistent all season. They started a 10 play at 7-1. and one. They arrive here with six consecutive wins. And you look at what they've done in the tournament. They've won some games, but when you win as much as you do in the regular season at VCU, I think the expectation is, is to win a conference tournament. Hasn't happened yet under Mike Rhodes. The concern with VCU's style of play is that they play so darn hard over the course of the season and I think the players get tired. If you look at their field goal percentage from the perimeter, they just don't shoot the ball well from three. And when you watch how hard they run, I think they get out of breath sometimes. I think that their legs get tired. Those are two things that can hurt your perimeter shooting. And thinking about perimeter shooting today, they've made only one out of four 
from deep. However, Davidson, they are 0 for 3. Mike Rhodes is a Shaka smart disciple. Must have been a, a real thrill. Both VCU and Marquette locked up their conference championships this year on the same day. A VCU locked up the regular season championship a while ago with a win at St. Louis. Won the 8-10, running away in the regular season by three games with that 15-3 record. Watson at the elbow, guarded by Schreiber. Baldwin waiting to double team, shot clock down to eight. And what a tip in there, well done by Sean Logan. The best time to offensive rebound is on a chaos play. Three VCU defenders went to block the shot. Nobody was boxing out. Got a freshman walk on his shield. Spadone guarding the conference player of the year. Watkins three, buries it. Got a 6'7 post player who can go out and do that. Pushing the tempo there, Grant Huffman draws the foul against Nunn. Second foul called against Nunn. Thinking about Grant Huffman. About a month ago, I talked to head coach Matt McKillop. He said, you know, he's tough. He defends well. He passes well. He pushes the pace. Just not a great shooter right now. Knocks down his first free throw. But that's changed in the last four games. He's made more than half his shots, Tim, and averaging right at 13 per. And historically, Davidson has been one of the best shooting teams in college basketball. Not so much this year. Mac McKillop said that, that what they're trying to do is have a lot of competitive games in practice so the guys can get used to seeing the ball go in. Davidson as the eighth seed, knocked off ninth seed in St. Bonaventure yesterday. BCU as the number one seed earned the double bye. Their last game was Saturday at George Washington, which turned out to be their sixth consecutive win. Good look inside to the Loach. Double team gets the shot off. Ends up in the hands of Reed Baylor. Looked to me like DeLoach got fouled. Davidson's been playing catch up most of this first half. They were down 6 0 to start. Now they're down five. Backdoor cut to Watson. Defensive player of the year in the conference. Ball went on him, and he draws the charge. Defensively. Look at the footwork by Ace Baldwin. He's tough, he's physical, and he is the epitome of a two-way player. Only the second time a guard has been named Defensive Player of the Year and also Player of the Year in the Atlantic 10. That came out on Tuesday. This may sound crazy. If Ace Baldwin only averaged seven or eight points per game, he would still have to be All-League A-10. Going in to score here off the glass with contact. Finds the bucket. Spadone pushing base. And Watkins knocked that ball away. Foster Lawyer has been out for a long time. They need him in the game. Even if he's not scoring, he has great gravity, meaning that everybody on VCU knows where he is and they're ready to leave their man to help. And Foster Lawyer with one bucket that turned into a three-point play, but that's it. Just coming back in, he's made one out of four shots. Get it to him in the corner. Wild shot, rebounded by Johns. Baldwin, no numbers, pulls it back out. Watkins just hit a three. This time goes in, scoops it underneath. Deloach had that one affected by Logan. Grant Huffman, every time he gets it to him, always ready to push it up. Draws the foul that time on his way to the basket. I really like the mindset of Huffman. You know, some teams, they try to break VCU's press and then pull it back out and run their offense. Davidson's doing it a little bit different. Paul, it's kind of like when you shave in the morning. Okay. If you go too fast, you cut yourself. It's bad. But in this case right here, I hate the idea of VCU setting up that half-court defense. Good job by Huffman. Huffman right back to the line and see if they can expose this advantage. Davidson's a very good free throw shooting team. They made 13 out of 15 yesterday in that win against St. Bonaventure. And so now they're in the bonus. Eight fouls against VCU. And they've knocked down four out of five free throws. 
And not easy to find points against VCU. You can focus on getting to the line, especially with this team. Could be a real plus. Right. Makes one out of two. Well, they've been able to get free throws and offensive rebounds. And look at right now, Davidson is back. Their feet are set. That's a big advantage for the Wildcats. This cushion of six for VCU is what we saw right away. Six nothing. They look inside the Johns against Logan. Good hands there from Watson up to Lawyer. inside to Bailey now back out to Huffman Davidson has been patient from the start here they've had difficulty getting open looks though with their set offense Huffman had that knocked away and they check and see which way it's going and that's a turnover against Davidson number seven seven turnovers is unacceptable so far VCU has not capitalized off a lot of those but Seven turnovers is going to be a big problem. The Rams for 17 turnovers per game. And that's best in the Atlantic 10. The calling card for the Rams, that pressure defense. Jackson back to Schreiber. Contested three. <laughs> His second of the afternoon. Last six games, more than half of those have gone in from him. Largest lead for VCU now at nine. Watson, crossover into the lane. Another rebound to the Rams, and here comes Ace Baldwin. Eyes up, pulls it back out. Driver again. That time it's short. Davidson inside of four minutes now will try and chip away at that nine-point deficit. Hoffman has been the most improved player for Davidson this year. And what a strong delivery to the basket by Reed Bailey. I think Matt McKillop was hoping to see a little more of that from the freshman. 6-11. Good take to the basket. Now they're down seven. Quarterfinal round here at Barclays in Brooklyn. First of four games. Looking forward to St. Louis. George Mason coming up next. Wild shot by Baldwin. The conference player of the year. You can get that to go. Baldwin now with six points. He's made three out of five after he went 0 for 9 in his last game. Almost comes up with a steal. First open three there for Lawyer in and out. And the rebound to Bailey. Just scored last time down court and does it again. <laughs> Davidson hanging around. Now down seven. They just trailed by nine. Inside of three minutes left in the quarterfinal round. Baldwin has had success going to the basket. Draws the foul against Huffman. Last Saturday in D.C., I watched David Schreiber hit four from distance in the second half. He has two in the first half. And on the other end, it's Baldwin up and under for his two. If you're a St. Louis fan, you're happy to see this guy getting off the bus. Yuri Collins not only leads the A-10 in assists, leads the nation with just over 10 per game. His Billikens, as the four seed, will take on number five, George Mason, right after Davidson and VCU. Thinking about point guards, Ace Baldwin has six points. Foster Lawyer, his counterpart, not a great start. Against Rhode Island, Foster Lawyer had 31. Because of that, he gets the star treatment today man and a half coverage every time he gets by his man somebody is waiting one for six from the field contested shots he's really struggling and remember last year Davidson had Luka Brakovich Matt Jones and Young Jun Lee those guys did a lot of heavy lifting and Foster Lawyer was able to run the show and get plenty of open looks this year they've moved Grant Huffman to the point guard and so far, Foster Lawyer has been coming and playing a lot of shooting guard. You mentioned open looks, and Davidson's offense just hasn't created that many in this first half. We're so used to seeing more assists than turnovers on that side, but right now they have seven turnovers and just three assists. The key to success for Davidson offensively, they want to be able to run their offense like a windshield wiper. Left, right, left, right, left. Just keep swinging it, and I think that this... VCU defense will get bored. 
Ace Baldwin knocks down a pair of free throws. He has eight points to match David Schreiber. Nobody with more than four so far for the Wildcats. Yeah, look at the stance by Ace Baldwin. It's as good as you're going to find. I actually get a little excited thinking about a Yuri Collins Ace Baldwin matchup. All the way in, but back out to Menenga. And I think the foul was called. Yes, it was against Foster Lawyer before he shipped that one outside to Menenga. The 92% free throw shooter will go to the line. That's two fouls against Deloach. And I want to come back to what you said a potential ace ball win against yuri collins matchup it's a ways away but the winner of this game will take on the winner of george mason and st louis tomorrow actually it will be on saturday um, friday is an off day and in the past that would have been accurate i think that that it's really going to help vcu to have friday off Saturday, the Premier League is on USA. Mo Salah and Liverpool look to continue their tour and pace and further climb the table. Four minute Liverpool, Saturday, 7.30 a.m. Eastern on USA. Yes, you are right. Saturday, you can watch the Premier League. You can also watch the semifinal round. My day's all set. <laughs> Go back and forth. No surprise to see Lawyer knocking them both down. Deficit of seven. BCU has been in front from the start. Johns hit the first basket and has that one there to put him back on top by nine. I like the layup. I love the delivery. Right on time. Hit the big man's post hand. Ball knocked away. Kachera gathers it. Back up top to Lawyer. Reed Bailey's been aggressive. Reversed for another two. See if they can come up with a stop now. This lead has been going between six and nine for the majority of the first half. BCU shooting it awfully well, over 50%. And as they've won six in a row, the offense, to go along with the defense, has been getting better as the season's got longer. Johns again, they continue to work it inside. VCU plays man-to-man -man defense. 75% of the time, the other 25, they get into their diamond press full court. Inside of one minute now, eight seeded Davidson, top seeded VCU in the quarterfinal round. Desmond Watson can't connect, got his own rebound, missed again, and the rebound to Kern. VCU has not led by double digits this entire game, right now up by nine. Excellent chance to do so. Johns has had success from that point here in this first half. Finds it again. You may wonder, why is Brandon Johns so fundamentally sound? I give a lot of credit to Jawan Howard, his coach at Michigan. Jawan is a great teacher in post moves, having a great base, being able to use leverage, understand angles. It's a really strong finish. I also think Brandon Johns looks like he's in the best shape of his life. That's what happens when you play at VCU every day in practice. You're pressing, you're trapping, and you're sprinting up and down the court. I thought you were going to say he's so fundamentally sound because all big men at Michigan just kind of have to be that way. <laughs> I was going to say when he was young, he came to my basketball camp. <laughs> that, that could make a difference. You know, it's helped him here, and so often we see transfers right now. It's The turnovers is part of college basketball. You see his minutes at 28. When you leave a place, you're thinking, I could have a better role somewhere else. I could play more somewhere else. He's doubled his minutes and really tripled his outcome when you look at his production. And it's not just that. One of the great things about Transfer Portal is that you develop a whole new circle of friends. You learn a different style. You get a chance to get your master's degree. Transfer Portal gets a bad rap. It really creates a lot of opportunity for a lot of players. Just last Saturday, the final regular season game posted his first double-double against George Washington, 17-10. Off to a healthy start here today. Eight points, three rebounds, and at the line. He, he's really a great fit for this system. I think that Mike Rhodes hit the jackpot 
when you watch Brandon Johns before the game, his teammates gravitate towards him. They really like him. He's become a leader. Made four out of five shots today as well. BCU enjoying a double-digit lead. 10 seconds left in the first half. Huffman inside. That's a pretty look to Menengo. They get it back to single digits. Baldwin, good if it goes. A VCU race to a 6-0 lead to start. And they head to the halftime locker room leading by 9, 37 to 28. Let's go back to the studio. Here's Ahmed Fareed. Here in the quarterfinal round, game one of four here this afternoon. VCU has been in control from the start. They race to a 6-0 lead. Halftime almost, almost over, and they lead by nine. Thanks for coming back with us, Paul Burmeister, alongside Tim McCormick. So the Rams have been in control, really, from the start. They've led by as many as 11. What's the best thing you've seen them do? As I look at the stat sheet, Paul, there's two things that jump out. Number one, pace of play. VCU needs it 70 and above. They've accomplished that. Also, three-point defense is critical so far. I don't think Davidson's made a three. They're 0 for 3 so far. Exactly. I think they're one worse. They're 0 for 4. So they're struggling to get off uh, the, the signature part of their offense. We started the broadcast talking about the point guard play, Foster Lawyer against Ace Baldwin. And so far, the A-10 player of the year in the regular season is on the better end of this. As advertised, Ace Baldwin, a terrific IQ player. If he had a business card, it would say star at both ends. He gets his teammates involved. He can get wherever he wants to go. He's acrobatic. He's tough. He's a leader. I am a huge fan of Ace Baldwin. What a beautiful up and under finish by number one, the best player. I love this stat from Matt McCall in the studio where he said that Ace Baldwin, only the second guard to be MVP and defensive player of the year. Good bounce back shooting as well as he was 0 for 9 over the weekend at GW and 3 out of 5. And high percentage is what I think of when I watch VCU play offense in that first half. They don't have a single player in double digits, but they have three with eight, Tim, and they're all making 60% or better. And getting good, easy shots is something Davidson, at least in the first half, struggled to do. Kern double team finds Deloach. Back over to Baldwin, and really they have been so patient. None for three, and the rebound to Menenga. The eyes are going right away to this Wildcat offense, Tim, to see if they can, with their crisp passing, we normally see create some more open looks. They really struggled that way early. They position themselves on the perimeter. They share the ball. The first 20 seconds is like a dummy offense to try to see if there's a, a spot. Well, what a good finish. Reed Bailey with the left over the shot blocker. Fifth game I've called for Davidson so far this season, Tim. I have not seen him this aggressive to the hoop. Bailey now eight points. And we're coming back the other way. Defense there from Lawyer. Skill development, a huge part of the Wildcats game. And it started with Bob McKillop. You know, he was such a visionary as a coach. He brought the international thing into college basketball. That's huge. Now you see that in the NBA. The positionless offense that every NBA team runs. Bob McKillop was running that 20 years ago. But Bailey with the bucket now tries for the assist to Watson. He can't get it back. I think Kern took one. And he got sw swiped up there near the eye. Just gave a thumbs up to his sideline. And Jameer Watkins stands up. He'll come in for it. Balance and patience on the offensive end, at least in the first half for VCU. Back out to Baldwin, five to shoot. Knocks down the three, puts him in double digits. This thing is going to approach danger zone pretty quick if they're not able to get stops talking about Davidson. I think they can get good shots if they're patient, but can they stop VCU? It's a good look inside and a swap from the Loach. Rams up by 10. They led by as many as 11 in the first half. Baldwin just hit one. And a rebound to Huffman. Up 
Chapman has had a harder time creating today as opposed to yesterday against St. Bonaventure. There's a good look to Lawyer, and that's exactly what they want. Quarterfinal round here, first of four games. George Mason St. Louis comes up next. Winner of this game will take on that winner on Saturday. Baldwin pulls it back, tried to get it inside, and it's off the hands of Kern, back to Davidson. Yeah, keep an eye on Foster Lawyer, constantly moving without the ball. That's money for him. Four times in Michigan named on the dream team. That's the All-State team, any class. It's pretty amazing. Three seasons at Michigan State, diving on the court. And this leads to the Loach. Climbs a lap. That's a big man's dream, to have the ball with nobody around you. Kern on the ground to lead to the Loach. And it's 6-9. About as easy as it gets. Well, I hope Deloach goes and says thank you because Kern is the one that made that play. Was it Kern? Yes, it was not. He didn't initially knock it away, but then he went yeah, down to the ground dope. to keep it alive. So make sure you take care. It's like the running back that takes care of his linemen. There you go. Got to look out for those guys. Lead back up to nine. VCU played Davidson twice in the regular season, both in January and won both times. Haley's been the top scorer for Davidson. Good defense there from Johns and the rebound to the Loach. At times, VCU's defense is stifling. And the offense has been patient. Inside to the Loach, extra steps. Turnover will come back to Davidson. You know, be before the game, Paul, I was I was thinking about this matchup. If I could use one word to describe Davidson, it'd be solid. One word to describe VCU, disruptive. And they've had those disruptive moments on defense, but they've just been, they being VCU, solid on offense as well. Lawyer all the way in, just hit the three behind the back to Watson. Skogman with it. And now Watson will go to the line. Like nobody wanted to shoot that from the lane there, Tim. Yeah. This defense is so good, there's really no deception. They attack nonstop, best pressure in the A-10. So if you get an open look, and I don't care who you are within 15 feet, you've got to take it right away. And Watson, after hitting for 17, that was a game high yesterday, and stuck on four points. Big freshman, the sophomore jump for Watson. Three points a game last year. Earned a starting role about mid to late January this year and has the average up just under 10. And looks to get it going here in the second half. Deloach checks out with three fouls. Watson told me earlier this year that the key to his success is his father. Dad took him under his wing early on and taught him the fundamentals. Then he started an AAU program nice thing about that is you know that if dad is coaching you're going to learn your fundamentals and you're going to get plenty of game time now davidson is going back and forth between zone and man which one do you think they ought to lean on here i think that that this is a, a, a really aggressive driving team i'd like to see a little bit more zone zeb watson shot clock to five shriver back out to watkins hit one of these in the first half First one in the second. All right, this is a problem. Double-digit lead, and the pace is too fast for Davidson right now. Grant Huffman, aggressive. All the way to the basket, draws the foul. Tamir Watkins has taken two three-pointers today and knocked them both down. His Rams lead by 11. VCU band, the Peppas getting into it, enjoying their 11-point lead. They've been on top of Davidson from the start. Mike Rhodes Rams, 15-3 in the regular season. They win the regular season in the A-10 by three games. Yes, they're known for defense, but the offense has been steady, calm, well-balanced today. They're shooting near 
They've made nearly half of their three-point shots, kind of beating Davidson right now at Davidson's own game. I agree. Plus nine from three. They're going inside. That inside-outside balance is tremendous. And I also like the fact that they've got nine guys that have already scored. The Havoc is, is their calling card, but balance on offense has been what it's about today. Almost a steal there. David Scobman tracks it down. Toby Lawal, tight defense. Back to Huffman, who's been playing a lot of point guard here today, along with Lawyer. Now that's the spot for Scobman. Knocks it down. I really like it out of a timeout when a coach dials up a play and it gets executed. Watkins has it knocked away by Watson. Off of Davidson, it'll stay right there. The trailing three is what the 6'11 Scobin loves to hit. Were you suggesting that maybe VCU change their trademark from chaos to balance? I don't think it's going to sell as well. <laughs> and there's the defense from Davidson that time. Getting the five-second call. You know, if a freshman makes that mistake, the coach yells at him. But with Ace Baldwin, that guy is like having a coach on the floor. You just let it go and keep moving. And Wildcats have had their moments. They just hit a three. They just caused a turnover with a five-second call. And there's a foul called away from the basket. I think it's on Baldwin against Lawyer. But they've had little windows of moments. How do they get into a four or five-minute pocket where they're dictating, as we see, Baldwin right here with the foul against Malloy. Pardon me, against Lawyer. Not a lot of contact there. Well, Skogman knocked down the three. That's their first of the game. Actually, now they've had two in the second half, which is much better. I, I just think that their defense has to pick it up, maybe get something in transition. I know that's asking a lot against the Rams. Well, they had the game tied at six early, but VCU pulled away from there and have been enjoying a lead of anywhere between six and 11 cents. Huffman, that's a beautiful feed. And how about the block from Johns? And then comes back up with it. Here comes Baldwin. They have Schreiber out to the left, and Jackson goes in and draws the foul. But the cleanup job inside from Johns here was wonderful. Well, the rim protection is elite, and that block shot actually serves as an outlet pass that started their break. He gets the ball after the block, gets the outlet pass, and that's the reason they're at the line at the other end. Eight points, four rebounds, that one block, and his former Michigan teammate Zeb Jackson at the line. Well, Davidson defensively has improved throughout the year, and I thought yesterday against St. Bonaventure, they deed up Daryl Banks really hard. That guy's at the top of the scouting report. He was only four for 15 and it was Grant Huffman that pitched the shutout. Jackson knocks them both down. One player in double figures so far. It's the conference player of the race, Baldwin. He has 11 points for VCU. Lead back up to 10. Wide open lane there for Huffman. Gets it back down to eight. If we're talking football, that's a blown coverage. I've been a little surprised that we have not seen as much full court pressure by VCU. The reason being that Davidson is really solid handling the ball. We're talking about them going back and forth between man and zone, Tim. They've been in the man consistently here in this half. John spinning into the lane. And he gets the foul called against Skogman before he got the shot off. That's three against Skogman. So you mentioned football. If it would have been a football football call, I would have said daylight. See, it's daylight yeah. line of scrimmage. Yeah, yeah I, I like mine better, but yours is good. <laughs> yours, yours fits better with what we're doing I, here. I think, but I mean, yours was good. I don't want to discourage you. <laughs> Driver hit a couple of threes in the first half, kicks it back out to John, spins into the lane. He is not shy about letting those go, and the rebound to Huffman. He's had the ball in his hands an awful lot, starting defense to offense here. Davidson has really done a good job on their defensive glass so far. VCU with all their length and athleticism, zero offensive rebounds. But Bailey, one on the way to the hole, but Watkins, you just saw Johns with the big block, and he comes up with that one. Goes off of Davidson back to the Rams. 
Hey, Jameer Watkins is a perfect fit for this system. He's built and moves like a pro. Remember his freshman year, he tore his ACL, so I still think he's got upside. Next year, Brandon Johns will be gone. Um, Jameer Watkins will step in. You talked about who's going to score for Davidson now. Their top three scores are out of the game. See if they can come up with a stop, and we'll see who they lean on on the other end. Watkins just had the block. Has the ball taken away by Kachera. And here comes Huffman. Back up to Logan, looking inside. This is Skogman working against John. Spin, quick spin, didn't work. Tries it again. Another block from Johns. If you're going to put a pamphlet together on post defense, you could use this video right here. He stays down, chest bump, building a wall, and went up late. If he goes up early, there may be a shot fake and a foul. You want to contest those interior shots late. Let the shooter go first. Last couple of minutes, defense standing up for VCU. Two blocks from Johns and one from Watkins. A shot clock. And Kachera was double teamed up top, and they call Watkins with the foul. <laughs> Mike Rhodes is beside himself. That was a really good defensive sequence. The shot clock violation was about to happen, and Watkins is going to go and have a seat. I'm sure he's going to hear about it. See if it was a foul against Kachera. It was called. Whew. Not much there. Third foul called against Watkins, and the sixth foul called against the Rams. And if Davidson can give them up to seven and spend a lot of the second half in the bonus, they shoot the free throws awfully well. Another turnover there. Ace Baldwin comes up with it. Up to Banks, just checked in, spins his way into the glass for two. Lead back to double digits, and they have been living in this space since the end of that first half. Kachera, runner, and the rebound to Shriver. BCU has had the lead up to 11. And a chance to push it up beyond that here. BCU wrapped up the regular season championship a week and a half ago. They won the 8-10 by three games. As the top seed, this is their first game here in Brooklyn. Baldwin, Kern, two more. VCU is a spurt team. You think you're doing pretty well, and then they drop an 8-0 run on you. Huffman back to Skogman. They kick it back out to Huffman. Another open three. Missed a pair of open looks there on that one possession, and they remain down by 12 as we hit the 11-minute mark. Winner goes on to take on either St. Louis or George Mason. The 4-5 game comes up right after this one. Banks three, and a rebound to Skogman. Haven't heard a lot much this half from the top two names you think of with Davidson, Tim, and that's Foster Lawyer and Sam Menenga. Those two score almost half of the Wildcats' points, and they've been locked up so far. They're on the bench right now. Third missed three of the last two possessions. Baldwin, a steady 11 points, four rebounds, top scorer in this game. And Banks, offensive foul. Good defense from Huffman. VCU enjoying its largest lead of 12 as we approach the halfway mark of the second half. So let's talk some defense for VCU. Following the scouting report is so important. The ball's brought in. Everybody knows that Grant Huffman is a good driver. He loves to go to his right. But look at the defense. Four players are going to be on the strong side ready for him. He still goes to his right hand. And there's four guys ready to start the break. Eight different Rams have led the team in scoring. Why? Because they get out in transition, and they're so good finishing. We talk about the turnovers in the defense, and the defense has been strong for VCU, as you've pointed out. You take a look at what they've done first or second 
in those categories. But turnovers right now, steals, both teams are within one number of each other. It's really been about the shooting. VCU still around 60%, while the Wildcats have struggled from the start. Davidson, one for five from three. Look, this is as simple as I can put it. VCU is really long, they're super athletic, and they defend like crazy. Everybody in the conference saw that all year. That's the reason they won the A-10 by three games. They do have their top two scores from the season back on the court. Lawyer with it right now. Menenga has it, misses the dunk. And it's been that kind of day offensively, but that will count. Yeah, I think what they're going to say is that Sam Menenga grabbed the rim afterward and touched the ball. Oh, it goes against him while he's up there. Yes. Okay, no basket. And it has been that kind of day for Sam Menenga <laughs> and if, the Wildcats. If you're missing dunks, you're probably not making threes. And they've been missing open threes as well. Kern slashes in, kicks it back out. Kern, Baldwin, still a game high, 11 points. Shot clock down to six. Another open look for three, knocked down by none. And now they have their largest lead at 15. Other side, Davidson has missed its last seven shots. Collection from outside as well as point blank like we just saw from Menenga. Good backdoor cut, late pass though. Scramble for it, Kern comes up with it. Up to Baldwin, eyes up. Another one just hit from there. And the rebound to Menenga. Sometimes you can play pretty good basketball and it may not be enough. I think Davidson's doing some really nice things on the defensive end, but VCU is more talented and they're playing with great confidence. Plus, Davidson played yesterday. Fatigue may be playing a factor. That ball initially called. Check it out here. The miss from Huffman. They initially said it would come back to VCU, but they came in and overruled that. We'll stay here with the Wildcats. They say it went off of Kern Jr. I thought it went off Huffman. Menenga back to Lawyer, double team. Crafty way of getting it back over to Watson underneath. Menenga can't finish, and it's tipped back out to the Loach. Double dribble called against Baldwin. Let's, let's watch the defense. I think Deloach is a stellar, stellar defender. Pretty good tricky pass by Foster Lawyer. It's really the only pass that he could have thrown. Have, Mike, I, have I told you I like Deloach? You can expand upon that as well. Oh. He is so long and athletic, and he's the perfect fit in this defensive system. A big guy that can cover one through five, offers rim protection. If you get the ball out in the break, he's a sprinter. We got Sam Menenga on the sideline. He's got his left wrist being attended to by a, an athletic trainer from the Wildcats. And now Menenga comes back to the huddle, comes back out of the court, and will play basketball again. And Tim Davidson just looking for any kind of offense. I mentioned they had missed seven shots in a row. Well. Haven't hit a field goal in the last five and a half minutes. Big reason why VCU is enjoying its largest lead so far at 15. Hoffman double team back to Skogman. Gets to the lane. Once again, it's Menenga. Just can't get the shot off from there. Baldwin in the low zone. The ball knocked away. Foul called again against the Rams. Against Ace Baldwin, his third. Yeah, just keep your hands up. I think that was borderline foul, but uh, Paul, early in the game, I asked you the question. Does Davidson look composed? For the most part, I think they've done a decent job so far. Yep. Turnovers is the thing that you're, you're always looking at, and they've done a, a good job. Not great, but they're still single digits. 
It's just that VCU, they have too much depth offensively. And the defense for VCU, not so much leading to a, a large number of turnovers, it's just leading them not getting off good shots. So let's break this down. 8-16 left. See if Benenga makes this one. He doesn't. So 14-point lead. We break it down into chunks. Foul called against Davidson. For the Wildcats to be back within, let's say, six at the four-minute mark, what are you pointing to? Defense. And But the, the problems are multiple. Number one, how do you make a 14-point comeback? You'd like to be able to shoot threes, right? That's not what Davidson does. They're two for nine from three. The second thing is that you'd like to force turnovers and play in transition. The transition for defense for VCU has been really good so far. See if they can get VCU out of this mode of offense. It's not that they've been playing that fast and exploding by Davidson. It's patience, good passing, leading to good shots. Shriver, they only have six to shoot. None with it against Huffman. Shriver three. And there's some good defense. You said that's where it starts. Huffman starting the offense now. Rams have led by as many as 15 after they raced out to that 6-0 lead at the top. Desmond Watson just can't buy one. Would you be surprised if I told you in this game VCU only has two points in transition? Wow. Because you think about them racing up the court, never afraid to push it, but it's been about solid, steady offense. Driver open. Tough to get in that ball. That's his third. He's their best shooter. He doesn't get as many attempts, but he can really knock it down. Biggest lead so far for the number one seeded Rams at 17. <laughs> Open look for Menenga, pump fake, back out to Huffman. He knocks down the three. That may be the best possession we've seen in the second half from Davidson. Shot fake, driving kick. No rush at all now for the Rams. Racing into the lane, great kick to Kern. Jackson to Kern for the flush. Kind of lulled the Wildcat defense to sleep there. Last year, Zeb Jackson would not have been able to make that play. His confidence is soaring. Last year he was at Michigan. Reed Bailey, the freshman, has it knocked away, but the foul called against Nick Kern. Rams doing it from outside and in. You think outside for VCU, it's Shriver. And then Zeb Jackson, acceleration and the dish. Nick Kern, happy to finish. So VCU number one, they're looking good here today. 15 and three regular season, however, when it comes to the conference tournament, Tim, only one time in the last five years in the A-10 have we seen the best team in the regular season win in the tournament. And that wouldn't surprise me this year. This is the most parity I've ever seen in the A-10. As a matter of fact, I think any of the top eight seeds could all get to Sunday. Who's your favorite today? Dayton. Didn't hesitate. Dayton is the most talented front court. Holmes and Kamara are both NBA players. Kobe Brea might be one of the best shooters. And Malachi Smith, man, that guy can run a team. He reminds me a lot of Ace Baldwin. Dayton will take on St. Joe's. That's one of the games coming up later on. Again, right after this one, it's four against five. The Billikens of St. Louis against George Mason. St. Joe's had some real energy last night, didn't they? What Eric Reynolds can score, and Davidson here in a 2-3 zone had not seen much of this so far. And you were calling for him to do more of that earlier because of the way VCU can drive and kick like that right there. Watson getting up to reject Johns, but he goes to the line. Zone has a tendency to make the game less athletic. It, it becomes more... You know, do you want to play chess or do you want to play checkers? I think that checkers is a lot easier. You don't have to think about it. And I think that would really help Davidson to be able to keep VCU on the perimeter. Well, the man-to-man -man wasn't working in terms of making the opponent take tough shots as VCU continued to show patience and knock down open looks. 
They were flirting at 60% field goals for a lot of this game. Check right now, they're at 57. So see if the zone can do any different, but the damage has been done. Johns knocks down one out of two free throws, and the lead's at 16. They've led by as many as 17. Davidson had won five out of six coming in here, playing their best basketball of the conference season. There's a wide open Menenga for two. But the Rams had won their last six games. Did you see the way that Grant Huffman moved the defense with his eyes? Mm. He was like a quarterback that looks off his prime receiver. He threw it right at the perfect time. Now that time it was you going with the football reference, so we're even. <laughs> all tied in one. I've got a couple more on my mind. I may break out. I want to win this battle. Well, we got five more minutes and another game coming up. Baldwin in trouble, kicks it back out to Johns. Only three to shoot. Now, they didn't get the shot clock off. The clock went out. You see a lawyer there? Look at, watch his eyes. Lawyer looked like a linebacker on a fumble. Now you're ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was looking off a of free safety. Oh. I think we've got the top seed leading by 15. VCU has the A-10 Player of the Year on that bench. You just saw him stand up there. Number one, Ace Baldwin. A solid 11 points to go along with five assists today. He's played the majority of time here. You can see the last 50 games, how good they've been. The 13 they've been without him. As you could imagine, without a player of that caliber, they have really, really missed him. That's the best stat of the year. 71 points with, 59 without. He is a A-10 superstar and he doesn't need to score a lot of points to dominate. Just his presence out there on the defensive end gives everybody confidence. Top three in the A-10, steals and assists, just into double figure scoring as well. Hoffman, backdoor, Skogman, another block. That is four in this half, this one to the Loach. Do we have a defensive player of the game award we can give out? What Johns would be rivaling him as well for how he's played both the of them both they're a tandem Deloach and Johns own the rim in this game well, how many times have we seen the Rams get the shot clock down near 10 like that Jameer Watkins with his third track you know, if you were going to look at an NBA prospect that nobody knows about Jameer Watkins could be that guy someday he's built like an NBA player and this time they get it up and in. Grant Huffman makes it a 15-point lead. Four-minute mark, number one VCU. Number eight, Davidson. Winner goes on to play either St. Louis or George Mason on Saturday in the semifinals. That game coming up in just a little bit. Johns, air ball. Davidson's made three of their last 13 shots, but that's an easy one. David and one. It has been all Rams this afternoon. They led 6-0 to start, and they have accelerated away as the top seed here in the second half. 343 left. They lead by 13. We're enjoying some defense in Brooklyn, and when you look at 343 to go, why is it that Davidson only has 50 points? It's that attack-style defense. Nine blocks, six steals. Davidson shooting 40%, great rim protection, and most important thing is that Davidson, they've lost their confidence and their swagger. They're not getting open shots, but when they do, there's a hand in the face. They're missing. I just, I think VCU is just so strong on defense, and the numbers will tell you that Dayton is the best half-court defense. Scoring defense numbers are off the chart for the Flyers. But in a fast, up-and-down game, VCU is just as good. I want to point out that, that number on the far right. You mentioned it, Tim, but let's come back to it and kind of circle it if we can. Nine blocks. That's a season high. Nine blocks for VCU. Four from Jalen Deloach. And all of those blocks could have been layups or dunks. Instead, the block shot is like an outlet pass that starts their break. And how many times have we seen, whether it's Menenga or Bailey, get the ball, get the ball down low, and even if it wasn't blocked, they couldn't get the shot off they wanted to.
Wow, they had DeLoach all by himself. Watkins, DeLoach, and Johns have done all of the work on the defensive end blocking shots. Look up and down the, the score sheet here for Davidson. Huffman, the only player in double figures. Lawyer just with eight, Menenga with nine. Jameer Watkins coming on as the season has got longer for the Rams, too, especially offensively. Winner of this game gets the winner of St. Louis, George Mason. On inside to Deloach, we mentioned he had the four blocks, misses there. Offensive rebound, Watkins puts it back in. That's four consecutive games for Watkins now in double figures. Hasn't missed a shot. Made three threes, and that was his first two. There's a good look. Wasn't blocked. Watson to Skogman. It's going to be really hard to press VCU. Why? They spend every single day in practice working against pressure. And John's fouled from behind by Foster Lawyer there. Former Spartan on the former Wolverine. <laughs> Davidson Bell, player zero, Foster Lawyer, Lawyer three years at Michigan Bell, State, was a contributor there. Had that average, you know, just a handful of points and has jumped it up to between 15 and 16 in both of his seasons here. Davidson seems like the perfect spot for his transfer destination. Boy, Deloach pulled down from behind, and they will give him that basket. Bailey trying to tackle him. Deloach gets the two, and he'll have a chance to make a three. Great pass, nice cut. It looked to me like the ball was on the floor. There, there's an intentional foul, though. You can't wrap up your man. Frustration foul. But normally, an intentional foul leads to, to no shot attempt, let alone a made shot. But Ace Baldwin on the line. He already has 11 points. Watkins also with 11. And Shriver off the bench, knocking down three threes has 11 as well so they're saying that Baldwin can't shoot that because the foul was against Deloach he'll have to shoot it and Mike Rhodes is saying that that should have been a three-point play in the NBA it would have not in college You think so much about Ace Baldwin offensively with VCU, Tim, but then with the way Watkins has come on, Deloach hit the line, and Shriver can knock down threes. Offense has really taken shape here in March. They're deep. Nine guys have scored in this game. And the problem for Davidson today is you can't really focus on any one guy because they're all capable of hurting you. And all those players I mentioned were here last year, and then you throw in Johns with the ball now. Shriver, who's not in the game, but easily the best three-point shooter. They weren't on campus a year ago. They were elsewhere. Shriver was at Hartford. We talked about Johns being in Michigan. So some excellent additions there. Zeb Jackson, too. Also from Michigan. Three seconds to shoot, and the foul called against Menenga. Matt McKillop does not like that foul. Menenga fouled with under three seconds on the shot clock and puts VCU on the line. Paul, I want your thoughts on, on George Mason versus St. Louis because that's going to be a fun matchup. Both these teams, stellar defense. Can't wait to see St. Louis. It'll be my first time with them this season. Yuri Collins, point guard, missed free throw there. And Skogman comes up with it back to Huffman. Leads the nation in assists, so you start there. But then you go to Josh Aduro on the other side. Had to work so hard to get that double-double yesterday. And, you know, St. Louis played for the last time on Friday. George Mason has been in two tight games since then. So I'm also thinking about the rest the Billikens have had. Three from Menenga, no good. And the rest that St. Louis has had. How about Oduro versus Okoro? The big O matchup inside couple of big guys are going to be banging hard. You got Oduro leading the Atlantic 10 in double doubles. Had his 13th yesterday. And O'Curl leads the A-10 in rebounding. Three-point line will be interesting as well. Gibson Jimerson might be the best shooter in the Atlantic 10. And then 
for George Mason. Biggest improvement I've seen this year. They really shoot the three very well. With no issue breaking that press. You mentioned a moment ago it's going to be difficult to press VCU, and I know they're up 13, so it's not a sense of urgency kind of press, but they look so comfortable doing so. Baldwin back up top to none. Three to shoot. Three more from up top. VCU will go sprinting in to that game on Saturday in the semifinals. Desmond Watson misfires on the three. And the rebound to Watkins. And we'll wait and see if it's George Mason or St. Louis. That game will tip off at the top of the hour. Now these VCU fans, so they're used to watching their team play in the A-10 tournament of the weekend inside of one minute now. Now they're going to have a day in between because those semifinals don't begin until Saturday. Well, I think it's going to bring a lot more fans here that can travel easier on the weekend. You know, as we do a little scoreboard watching, remember what the number is I said before the game that, that if Davidson was not able to hold VCU under it, they would not be able to win. 70, you've got it written down right there. The scoreboard says 71. Well played. Inside a minute left. Get some substitutions in here. VCU is led by as many as 17, and now it's the largest lead at 18. And Jay Nunn has had a couple of moments there, the three, and he just took it in there for the drive. Paul, you know if I get a prediction right, I'm yes. going to share it with you. As you should. I should have set that up assist myself. Likely the end of the career for Foster Lawyer. And what a career he has had, 146th game. Michigan State and Davidson. Another turnover there. And VCU with its largest lead. The Foster Lawyer, the only senior on this team, so everybody else will be back, but that is the heartbeat of the Wildcats on the bench, likely having played for the last time. Well, this sets up a battle against the winner of George Mason and St. Louis. Nice start to the A-10 tournament but by Mike Rhodes squad VCU. And this will be nine consecutive wins for VCU away from home. And Watson, one final ball slapped away there by Watkins. And that'll do it. Quarterfinal Thursday underway with the number one seed VCU Rams from the start. No issues at all in advancing to the semifinal round. They win 71 to 53. Four players in double figures for the Rams. Three of them with 11. Watkins, Nunn, and also Shriver. Baldwin also in double figures to go along with his six assists. Long way to go here on this quarterfinal Thursday. The Rams win by 18. Top of the hour, St. Louis against George Mason, four against five. And then later on this evening, Dayton St. Joe's and Fordham and LaSalle. Winning coach is on the baseline with Corey. Thank you, Paul. Coach, early on in the game, you told me you wanted to address the offensive efficiency. How do you think your team performed in that area to the rest of the game? Much better. A couple early turnovers in the second half, but we played downhill. We just, the ball got hotter today, second half, and we got each other's shots. Ace was sort of orchestrating things, and then... You know, sometimes when that ball gets hot, everyone wants to be a part of it. We got downhill, we got some open shots, really proud of them. Deloach and Johns, I mean, between the two of them, I just stopped counting blocks. It's blocks, blocks, blocks. Why were they so crucial in today's game? Well, those guys are athletic and, and they hawk the ball, which is great. I thought their ball screen defense was even better than their defense at the rim. To hold Davidson to 53 points, you know, that's pretty good. So we got to keep continuing to do that. Looking ahead, how do you build on this momentum the rest of the tournament? Win the day. Eric Maynard. That's his motto, win the day. Let's just win the day. We won today, tomorrow in practice. Uh, we got to get ready for whoever we played, win the day. All we can control is the day, the day we're in. That's how we're doing it. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Paul? And this day, a quarterfinal Thursday, a victorious one for VCU. They lead early, and they win by All right, thank 18. you, Paul. A dominant victory. First time we have seen VCU in this tournament so far, 71-53. The final score, Matt did... VCU just play a perfect game for them. Coach Rhodes just said it. They won the day. Yeah. <laughs> they, sure, they won the day. 
I mean, we'll talk about their defense in a second, which was absolutely outstanding. But I just thought the balance on the offensive end of the floor, like Coach Rhodes alluded to, the ball was hopping. It 18 assists in this game. And it wasn't just ace ball. And think about this, four guys in double figures, Brandon Johns chips in nine points, almost five guys in double figures. But really, when you look at the other end of the floor, mm. the job that they did on Foster Lawyer, and first of all, what a tremendous career that he's had at Davidson, just a complete winner. The job he did as, a young, as an older veteran guard on this team with all those young players to see the growth and the improvement from the Davidson program throughout the course of yeah. the year. But VCU's defense on him was outstanding. He really struggled in this game. And then it's the, the, the defense inside the paint. Yeah. The rim protection for VCU was outstanding. 